Every drone pilot eventually faces this question, are ND filters really worth the hassle? I've got a selection of them here with me today, all promising to fix the same problem, but in slightly different ways. Filmmakers have always chased the cinematic look, that small amount of motion blur that makes your footage feel natural and realistic. So there's one golden rule when it comes to achieving this cinematic look, and that is that your shutter speed should be roughly double that of your frame rate. So today I'm going to be filming at 30 frames per second, which means that we're looking to achieve a shutter speed of a 60th to get this look and feel. And drones don't make this easy for us. With a fixed aperture, a fixed shutter speed, an ISO that can only go so low, the problem we're going to face is that our images are going to quite literally be blown out. That's where ND filters come in. Think of them like sunglasses, but for your drone. They're going to cut down dramatically the amount of light that enters into the sensor, allowing you to be able to lower those shutter speeds to get that blurry motion that we're trying to achieve. But are they really worth the effort of fiddling about, swapping them in and out? That's the question that I want to answer today. I've set up a waypoint mission flying low over a line of trees. This way the movement is consistent across every run and the leaves should make it easy to see how different shutter speeds affect the motion. Each drone gets two runs, a baseline without filters and a second adjusted to try and get as close as possible to that 1 60th shutter speed at ISO 100. Let's start with the Air 3S. The baseline run immediately pushes the shutter speed through the roof as expected in bright daylight. The Air 3S combo comes with an ND 832 and 128, which effectively gives me three, five and seven stops of light reduction. Okay, let me show you how we go about changing one of the filters. On the front, we've got a, a glass protector as standard on the drone, and we just literally rotate it and it'll come off. There's four little lug pins that hold it in place. We then just take the corresponding ND filter that we want and obviously I'm trying to do this while showing it to you and aligning this up and once we've got it in place we then just hold and twist that into place and it's as simple as that and we've now got the ND filter on. For this run I'm going straight in with the strongest ND128 that I have. That should give us a fighting chance of slowing the shutter to where I want it to be. The run completes with the ND filter in place and it feels like we're right on the edge of what is possible in light like this. If it had been a brighter day, this filter would not have been strong enough. Next up, the Mini 4 Pro. Again, a baseline flight and then we'll try a different approach. On the Mini 4 Pro, instead of using fixed ND filters, I've gone for variable ND filters, this twin pack giving me the equivalent of nine stops of light. It should be so much easier to be able to make an adjustment rather than having to take on and off the ND filters just by making a small adjustment on the front of the actual filter itself. When it comes to the Mini 4, the principle's the same. It's just everything's a little bit smaller, so a little bit more fiddly. And we've got a choice of the two variable ND filters. I'm gonna take the stronger of the two. And again, we're going to apply the same principle. We're just going to rotate and remove the filter. And we're going to align that up correctly. And we're going to just align and put that on so. And then once that's on, we can actually adjust. There is a marking on the front here that allows us to be able to adjust the strength of the variable ND filter. I've started by setting it at around seven stops, roughly matching the Air 3S. The image looked way too dark at that setting, so I'll bring the drone back and quickly dial it down to six stops. That gives me the aperture I was aiming for, and it was just a simple twist of the filter rather than pulling the drone apart before flying again. Finally, the Mavic 4 Pro. You'll notice straight away that this drone has a slightly tighter lens at 28mm compared to the 24mm on the other two. I've only got the ND8 and 16 filters, which we know on their own won't be enough to cut down the midday light that we've got today. Finally, we've got the Mavic 4 Pro, and this is a bit of a beast. We apply the same principle, rotate, and we remove the three lens protector. And then we just simply take out the ND16. And we just align that in the same way and rotate that into place. And it's as simple as that. But this drone has one big advantage. Unlike the Air 3S and Mini 4 Pro, it has a variable aperture. So instead of fighting with filters, I can simply stop the lens down to F4. That adjustment alone should be enough to bring the shutter into the right range. It's a very different way of handling the problem and it's something only this drone is capable of out of the three we are testing today. 
So with filming complete here on location, it's time to pack up, head back to the office, load up the footage and see what worked best. So I'm back in the office and I've had a chance to review the footage from all three drones. The first thing to say is that there is a difference between them, but not as great as I might have expected between the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3S. Where I did notice a bigger difference was that the Mavic 4 Pro, its extended dynamic range really stood out and I was able to recover so much more detail in the highlights. Just to be clear, all the footage you're about to see is unedited. The only correction applied is the appropriate D-Log to Rec. 709 LUTs. Let's start with the Air 3S. On the left we have footage without an ND filter and on the right the DJI with an ND128. This was the only DJI branded filter I used in this experiment and it gave me the best exposure, balance and least colour contrast. When I pause the video and punch into the corners the motion blur is definitely visible. On the left the frame is static and on the right there's a pleasing amount of blur. Moving on to the Mini 4 Pro, there's a noticeable difference in exposure between the runs. Nothing that can't be corrected in post, but I did notice that the Freewell variable ND had a slightly warm colour cast. Again, this can be fixed when editing. And just like the Air 3S, the motion blur was visible once we zoom in and look at the frames in the corners. Finally, the Mavic 4 Pro. This was a surprise, both with and without filters. The drone was giving me the same EV reading of zero during the flight. For this test, I was using a Freewell ND16. The exposure, colour and rendering with the ND filter looks very pleasing, and although in editing I could bring them very close, that wasn't so much of an issue. The difference might also come from using the lens wide open at f2.8 versus stopping down to f4, so more testing would be needed to confirm that. As a final experiment, I applied motion blur in post-production to the Mavic 4 Pro footage, shot without a filter. The results are surprisingly good, which raises another question. How much of this could be solved in editing rather than in the field itself? So, are ND filters worth the hassle? If you're a professional filmmaker who needs absolute consistency, the answer is probably yes. If you're flying the Mavic 4 Pro, the answer is also yes, because aperture control makes it easy with or without slowing you down. But if you're working with the Mini 4 Pro or the Air 3S, you'll need to think carefully. Personally, I value the chance to capture more footage when the light is at its best over constantly swapping filters. Pair that with the post-production tools we now have available to us, and it's hard to justify the hassle. For me, versatility is priority when I'm making videos such as this for YouTube. My Mini 4 Pro is more than good enough. And when I want to push aerial filmmaking further, for my personal projects, the Mavic 4 Pro makes it effortless. With or without filters, that makes it my go-to choice. My name is Nicholas Hill, and this has been another episode of Learn, Shoot, Repeat. And until next time, thanks for watching.